The Renaissance Poets, an introduction, volume one. For our Renaissance poets, we start with the coming to the throne of Henry VIII in 1519. From then until its end, with the crumbling of the English Republic under Cromwell in 1659, these poets capture a time when the world as they knew it underwent tumultuous change. Within their ranks were Spencer, Dunn, Milton, Shakespeare, Sidney, Johnson, Marvel, Drayton. It is a list rich and sumptuous, long and gloried. In these volumes, we bring all these poets and others together to illustrate this poetical canon. On Shakespeare by John Milton What needs my Shakespeare for his honoured bones, the labour of an age in piled stones? Or that his hallowed relics should be hid under a star appointing pyramid? Dear son of memory, great heir of fame, what needst thou such weak witness of thy name? Thou, in our wonder and astonishment, hast built thyself a live-long monument. For whilst to the shame of slow endeavouring art thy easy numbers flow, and that each heart hath from the leaves of thy unvalued book those Delphic lines with deep impression took, then thou, our fancy of itself bereaving, dost make us marble with too much conceiving. And so sepulchred, in such pomp dost lie, that kings for such a tomb would wish to die. Beauty, Time and Love by Samuel Daniel Fair is my love, and cruel as she's fair. Her brow shades frown, although her eyes are sunny. Her smiles are lightning, though her pride despair, and her disdains are gall, her favours honey. A modest maid, decked with a blush of honour, whose feet do tread green paths of youth and love, the wonder of all eyes that look upon her, sacred on earth, designed a saint above. Chastity and beauty, which were deadly foes, live reconciled friends within her brow. And had she pity to conjoin with those, then who had heard the plaints I utter now? For had she not been fair and thus unkind, my muse had slept, and none had known my mind. My spotless love hovers with purest wings about the temple of the proudest frame, where blaze those lights fairest of earthly things, which clear our clouded world with brightest flame. My ambitious thoughts, confined in her face, affect no honour but what she can give. My hopes do rest in limits of her grace. I weigh no comfort unless she relieve. For she that can my heart in paradise holds in her fairest hand what dearest is. My fortunes wheel the circle of her eyes, whose rolling grace deign once a turn of bliss. All my life sweet consists in her alone. So much I love the most unloving one. And yet I cannot reprehend the flight, or blame the tempt presuming so to soar. The mounting venture for a high delight did make the honour of the fall the more. For who gets wealth that puts not from the shore? Danger hath honour, great designs their fame. Glory doth follow, courage goes before. And though the event oft answers not the same, suffice that high attempts have never shame. The mean observer whom base safety keeps lives without honour, dies without a name, and in eternal darkness ever sleeps. And therefore, Delia, tis to me no blot to have attempted though attain thee not. When men shall find thy flower, thy glory pass, and thou with careful brow, sitting alone, receive it hast this message from thy glass, that tells the truth, and says that all is gone. Fresh shalt thou see in me the wounds thou madest, though spent thy flame, in me the heat remaining. I that have loved thee thus before thou fadest, my faith shall wax when thou art in thy waning. The world shall find this miracle in me, that fire can burn when all the matter's spent. Then what my faith hath been thyself shalt see, and that thou wast unkind thou mayst repent. Thou mayst repent that thou hast scorned my tears when winter snows upon thy sable hairs. Beauty, sweet love, is like the morning dew, 
whose short refresh upon the tender green cheers for a time, but till the sun doth show, and straight tis gone as it had never been. Soon doth it fade that makes the fairest flourish, short is the glory of the blushing rose. The hue which thou so carefully dost nourish, yet which at length thou must be forced to lose, when thou, surcharged with burthen of thy years, shall bend thy wrinkles homeward to the earth and that in beauty's lease expired appears the date of age the calends of our death but ah no more this must not be foretold for women grieve to think they must be old i must not grieve my love whose eyes would read lines of delight whereon her youth might smile flowers have time before they come to seed and she is young and now must sport the while and sport, sweet maid, in season of these years, and learn to gather flowers before they wither. And where the sweetest blossom first appears, let love and youth conduct thy pleasures thither. Lighten forth smiles to clear the clouded air, and calm the tempest which my sighs do raise. Pity and smiles do best become the fair. Pity and smiles must only yield thee praise. Make me to say, when all my griefs are gone, Happy the heart that sighed for such a one. Let others sing of knights and paladines in aged accents and untimely words, paint shadows in imaginary lines, which well the reach of their high wit records. But I must sing of thee, and those fair eyes authentic shall my verse in time to come. When yet the unborn shall say, Lo, where she lies, whose beauty made him speak that else was dumb. These are the arcs, the trophies I erect, that fortify thy name against old age, and these thy sacred virtues must protect against the dark and time's consuming rage. Though the error of my youth in them appear, suffice, they show I lived and loved thee dear. The Royalist by Alexander Brome Come, pass about the bowl to me, a health to our distressed king. Though we're in hold, let cups go free. Birds in a cage may freely sing. The ground does tipple health's apace. When storms do fail, and shall not we? A sorrow dares not show his face when we are ships and sacks the sea. Pox on this grief, hang wealth, let's sing. Shalls kill ourselves for fear of death. We'll live by the air which songs do bring. Our sighing does but waste our breath. Then let us not be discontent, nor drink a glass the less of wine. In vain they'll think their plagues are spent when once they see we don't repine. We do not suffer here alone. Though we are beggared, so's the king. Tis sin to have wealth when he has none. Tush, poverty's a royal thing. When we are larded well with drink, our heads shall turn as round as theirs. Our feet shall rise, our bodies sink, clean down the wind like cavaliers. Fill this unnatural quart with sack. Nature all vacuums doth decline. Ourselves will be a zodiac, and every month shall be a sign. Methinks the travels of the glass are circular, like Plato's year, where everything is as it was, let's tipple round, and so tis here. Renunciation by Henry King We that did nothing study but the way to love each other, with which thoughts the day rose with delight to us and with them set, must learn the hateful art how to forget. We that did nothing wish that heaven could give beyond ourselves, nor did desire to live beyond that wish, all these now cancel must, as if not writ in faith, but words and dust. Yet witness those clear vows which lovers make, witness the chaste desires that never break into unruly heats, witness that breast which in thy bosom anchored his whole rest, tis no default in us. I dare acquite thy maiden faith, thy purpose fair and white as thy pure self. Cross planets did envy us to each other, and heaven did untie faster than vows could bind. 
Oh, that the stars, when lovers meet, should stand opposed in wars. Since then some higher destinies command, let us not strive nor labour to withstand what is past help. The longest date of grief can never yield a hope of our relief. Fold back our arms, take home our fruitless loves, that must new fortunes try, like turtle doves dislodged from their haunts. We must in tears unwind a love knit up in many years. In this last kiss I here surrender thee back to thyself. So thou again art free. Thou in another, sad as that, resend the truest heart that lover e'er did lend. Now turn from each, so fair are severed hearts as the divorced soul from her body parts. Come, Wisdom Sweet by Morgan Floyd Come, wisdom sweet, my spirit meet, for at thy feet I fall. O chiefest thing, my wealth, my wing, my rest, my ring, my all. My love, my light, my song, my sight, my bread, my bright eternal one. He does not cease to give increase with peace and ease in one. Sin, death, and Satan, crabbed foes, are kings of woes and wrath, as wind, fire, brimstone join in one. Our Christ all conquered hath. O drumed cree, au nathemni, pe basiti o thiu, heb la the tree, ath lathoth di, in thuithoni, i viu. Fair summer droops. From Summer's Last Will and Testament by Thomas Nash Fair summer droops, droop men and beasts therefore, So fair a summer look for nevermore. All good things vanish less than in a day, Peace, plenty, pleasure suddenly decay. Go not yet away, bright soul of the sad year, The earth is hell when thou leavest to appear. What shall those flowers that decked thy garland erst Upon thy grave be wastefully dispersed? O trees, consume your sap in sorrow's source, Streams, turn to tears your tributary course. Go not yet hence, bright soul of the sad year, The earth is hell when thou leavest to appear. <laughs>